if there's one trend that I'm really enjoying right now, it's the posting their L's accounts. E-boys posting their L's. E-girls posting their L's. Think tanks posting their L's. Coomers posting their L's. But the one that I like most of all, and probably the only one that I can intersectionally talk about myself, is fat people posting their L's. And yes, being a person of size myself, I am in fact allowed to do this video topic. Nobody else can. None of you thin people, otherwise known as figures, can in fact do this. Only we fats can, understand? Just want to point out before we begin, this is definitely a video where we, uh, we, we laugh and chuckle. It's less about the point, even though there will be a point at the end. It's less about the point and more about the fun. So let's go. I would rather be out here celebrating and finding peace with our magical bodies rather than projecting our own insecurities. Edit. Actually, it would be nice if people could just mind their own fucking business. I love the use of the black emojis. I use them all the time, too. Honestly, take the time to try and decolonize your mind instead of sucking the joy out of fat pussy love. Man, we're starting off strong. I don't even know, like, am I allowed to show you this? Because, like, that 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 looks like it might be the vagina, but I can't tell. Actually, I can't, you know what, looking at it now, I can't even tell what side of the person we're looking at. It's diabetes and coronary artery disease. Can you rephrase that in body positive terms? Okay, I'll, I'll give it a shot. You're so brave and fabulous that your pancreas and heart can't keep up. Oh yeah, I remember this. I remember this from, um from back during, I think, the release of Smash 4, when Sakurai added the Wii Fit Trainer character. Looks like I won't be buying Super Smash Bros, since Nintendo apparently supports fat shaming, as seen by the inclusion of the whitewashed embodiment of Thin Privilege herself, the Wii Fit Trainer. Okay, so for those of you who, um, who don't know, basically on the Wii, they had a, a balance board, you could stand on it, do exercises with it, it was, it was a pretty good casual game. Um, there was a lot of like yoga and stuff, but it, the the actual mascot of the game was this mannequin-looking woman who would move around and do the yoga with you and show you how to do it. I mean, she she's very clearly not like a white person. She's a white mannequin. Like she's she's just like pure eggshell white, you know. But even back then, back when uh, We Fit came out, which was what 2008 or something, people were complaining that Nintendo was being fat phobic for releasing the game. After the horrifying fiasco that was Microsoft's conference last yesterday, where a woman was literally raped for losing a round of Killer Instinct. Oh yeah, I remember this. This was like, what, 2012, 2013's E3? Check out this clip, guys. This is gonna get interesting. For those of you who don't know, Torn's the producer for Killer Instinct, and he's brought out the new tournament edition Mad Cat's Fight Stick, which will be available at the launch of Killer Instinct. Good luck, Ashton. Come on, Ashton, bring it. <laughs> Whoever thought it was a good idea that I play against a producer is going to get it. Come on, you got to practice before you get on stage in front of millions of people. I can't even block correctly, and you're too fast. There we go. Just let it happen. It'll be over soon. You have a fight stick. Man, if this happened like E3 2020 or 2021, there would be such an outrage mob. But back then, it was just laughed about on 4chan. Obese woman was arrested for starving her seven kids. There was only enough food for me. Look at the fucking picture. Look at this woman and look at those kids. They're like skeletons, dude. They're like Ethiopian level. A disturbing report is coming out of Louisiana this morning that tells the story of 27-year-old Lakeisha Connors, who reportedly starved her children nearly to death. Mother of seven was arrested on Thursday evening when neighbors called police and said they saw extremely unhealthy looking children digging through the trash cans on the side yard. When police arrived and knocked on the door, they were greeted by three-year-old Amonette Connors and five-year-old Dante Connors who let them into the home. Authorities say they found the mother passed out on the couch. What the actual fuck? Okay, we can tell by the size of this woman, there's clearly m more than enough food going around. The kids could literally eat their mother and be fine for a few years here, okay? Sometimes we eat, sometimes we don't. Yeah, uh, press X to doubt. Oh god, do you even want to read this story? Let's talk accessibility. I'm an infinifat. You're infinitely fat? Meaning I wear plus 30 clothing in the UK, and many shops don't carry that. 
I use the disabled toilet, because that's what I need to do. But they're still not very fat friendly. Things are put as close together as possible, giving me no space to wipe myself. Oh god. I'm luckily flexible and do what I call wipe yoga. I have to take off my bottoms and often one shoe to be able to place my leg on the wall or something else to balance on to wipe. Imagine letting yourself get so fat that you have to do yoga to reach your asshole. This, this can be a workout. I'm panting, shaking, and starting to feel rubbish afterwards. Well, you do need a workout. But I do need the toilet sometimes, like all humans do. In the UK, they like to lock the, the damn doors for disabled users. You have to hunt down a person with the key. It's exhausting, and this time, I'm at the National Museum in Cardiff, and the bloody toilets are down a flight of stairs. The lift doesn't work. I can and do walk up and down stairs, but oh, people who can't. It's bullshit. And then they... What was it? They had some Arby's? You know, you might be thinking Arby's, but you probably shouldn't be eating it if you're if you're having to do wipe yoga. How do you poo? <laughs> oh my god. I weigh nearly 600 pounds now, so I have to sit down, but not on the toilet because it would break. I use a beanbag chair as my toilet, because when I sit on it, it creates a kind of space in the middle with surrounding walls. So when I shit, the fecal matter spreads around me, but doesn't overflow. Then I scoop the shit into the toilet, usually flushing four or five times to get it all down. It fucking sucks because I use the same beanbag for general sitting, and it's starting to smell. Don't get fat, bros. I've tried... <laughs> Okay, I, I gotta get through this. I've tried shitting into a mini fridge that has been turned on so the cold would cause the shit to condense its moisture and make it easier to flush, but it wasn't comfortable. I can just imagine this, this fat Wojak here, like, holding a full-ass mini fridge directly up to his asshole and filling it with shit. They sent my OnlyFans content to my fan. Is this a... This is a real video? I gotta hold on. There's no way this woman. Oh my god, it's real. Hey, it's your girl Diggy B, and a girl is looking ragged today, but we're not gonna talk about that. We're talking about something completely different. So, I get a lot of mixed feelings when it comes to my OnlyFans. And you guys are probably like, this. quit fucking talking about it. But I have to, because. <clears throat> I'll just explain. So for me, um, I'm trying to break the stigma that fat girls are too big or too impulsive or too overweight to have sex. Because just like our appetites are, sex can be a bit ravenous too. Is, is that why you have the tusks? Good God, the comments on this video were unreal. Hey Wendy's, my overweight friend and her adult daughters went to your Toledo store. Richard at the counter who never met them before, had said, the usual. My friend says, what are you talking about? Richard says, two of everything. <laughs> she doesn't even want her lunch now, she's crying. <laughs> I, always, I always knew Wendy's was based, but damn. Mum, who spent 93 pounds to travel 82 miles for Tinder date, called fat and then dumped. That's rough. Like, Tinder's a rough place to be anyway. The pair had met a few times before, and she was chatting to him on the phone when she arrived. She explained, that's when he said, fuck me, you've put on some weight, haven't you? I was like, no, you can't say that. Ho hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. So, if you haven't put on the weight, you just say, no, I haven't. Like, if there's some kind of, like, miscommunication, or he, he, he misremembers or something. But she doesn't even deny it, she just says, you can't say that to me. And, and she started... A GoFundMe to get her 90 pounds back because her date called her fat. I just want to make my 90 pounds travel money back so I can buy wine and sticks of lard. There are like a billion funny stories like that, but as you keep digging just beyond the, the surface level humor, you begin to realize there's actually like a, a fat positivity movement or something. Dear my skinny friends, what are you actively doing to unlearn the gaze that renders fat folks unattractive? Now you can see this is this is already steeped in that intersectionalist language, where it's 
it's unlearn rather than something being innate like attraction or it's it's a gaze like the male gaze you know this is the anti-fat gaze that apparently we all have when we're not attracted to a fat person it's strange because we accept sexual orientation as being an immutable characteristic right this idea that you can't really change who you're attracted to and yet when it comes to like in the super straight video being attracted to trans people or being attracted to fat people like like in this video uh, now it's something that needs to be unlearned imagine telling a gay person to unlearn their attraction see how far that would get you dear friends with bodies of normalized sizes see you, even the way like I, I could just pick apart every single sentence here because like I kind of I've been reading a lot of books on intersectionality and critical theory and they they phrase it this way so that rather than being fat is something that they've done to themselves whether it's through diet lack of exercise even if they have some kind of medical condition that makes them more prone to put on weight they haven't managed it well rather than it being any of those things it is something that society has pushed on them it's external so rather than being thin or making themselves thin or keeping themselves thin your average person has bodies of normalized sizes see Listen to how passive that sounds. How it's simply society's fault that those sizes are normalized, and that's the only issue we're dealing with here. Let's stop pretending that our non-desires are simply preferences and not culturally informed. So, okay, literally the argument that Christians gave against gay marriage, got it. Or as if they were just a given fact that one can't influence. If your idea of body positivity stops at simply not actively shaming fat folks, I call it doesn't go far enough. Okay, so if you're not having sex with the fat person, then you are oppressive. Suck the fat roll, bigot. This whole thing honestly reads like it was written by an incel. As queers, we've left the heteronormative desirability matrix. But what about the other norms that determine who's hot and who's not? including those within our own communities. Hand on heart, how many of the people you had a crush on were fat? How many are your partners? Are the people you swipe right on Tinder, message on OkCupid, or flirt with at the club? Mainly thin people? Masculine presenting? Able-bodied and white? We are literally at the policing other people's consent stage of radical intersectionality. Because a lot of these broadly radical left ideas require violating people's consent. If you're a socialist, you have to violate the consent of people who own property. Or even if they don't own property, they don't want their labor collectivized. If you're an intersectionalist, you have to violate people's consent in this way. It no longer matters if you choose X. If that's an oppressive choice, your consent doesn't matter anymore. Consent is basically a modern expression of the older liberal conception of natural rights and the left's historic materialists have already given up the idea of natural rights. And yeah, we've already reached the point too where they have to basically go actively hunting for microaggressions. Fellow fats. <laughs> Fellow fats, what's something that's not explicitly anti-fat but you experience as anti-fatness? For example, when thin friends only seem to want to process their body insecurities with you, their fattest friend, talking to you at length about food addiction, etc. I've noticed that people feel really entitled to my time and help. I get approached a lot with people asking for directions, where something is, if I know which train someone needs to get on, etc, etc. So yeah, yeah, we're at the point where asking someone directions is fat phobia. Of course, these things intersect in strange ways, don't they? Men who don't wear jackets in cold weather do so with the express intent of intimidating women and to make women feel like lesser beings. If you see a man who is not wearing a jacket when they're when you're cold, then call him out on his toxic masculinity and his ego violence. Yeah, well, you know what, sentient Jessica? What if that man is just really, really fat and therefore the cold doesn't really affect them at all? Like they have all that extra blubber to, to insulate things. Are you going to be fat phobic and call them out then? Why are men larger than women? It makes no evolutionary sense for women to be smaller, because everything from birthing children to surviving predators would be easier if we were the same size as men. So why are we smaller? Because men have starved women of food for untold generations to ensure their own survival. A smaller body means women can survive with less food and have more to share with their children because with men around, both mother and child are going to get less of everything. So smaller women were more likely to survive the time of famine, and therefore we have evolved to become smaller so we can survive men's greed. This sounds very anti-fat to me. 
In fact, it sounds like you're saying a fat person's fatness is based not on an immutable characteristic, but on diet. How dare you? This asexual TikToker has message for haters. All right, let's let's check it out. My name's Stephen McHale, and I identify as asexual. Big. I'm asexual. I don't feel sexual attraction. Don't worry, buddy. The feeling is mutual. That's the thing. A lot of asexuality is caused by being ridiculously overweight to the point that the sex drive plummets. And I think there's definitely some kind of overlap between people rigidly demanding that asexuality be accepted. And fair enough, if you're asexual, like, like whatever, right? But the fact that there is a overlap between that and being very unhealthy, I have a feeling that if most asexuals, not all, but if most asexuals got a handle on their health, they probably wouldn't be asexuals anymore. Keto is racist. <laughs> Sargon, Sargon, I didn't know you were, you were this kind of a person. I can't prove it, but just gives me white supremacy vibes. To be honest, any diet or anything that promotes weight loss is oppressive. I rest my case, your honor. This tweet was a joke when I was half asleep, but since y'all want to get into it, let's do it. Okay. First, keto was originally created to treat patients who had epilepsy, and somehow white women co-opted it into a weight loss diet. So it's ableist. Diet culture and fat phobia are rooted in racism and white supremacy. Any diet or restrictive eating that alters your body from its natural state is racist. The beauty mo Hold the fuck on. <laughs> wait, 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 wait a second alters your body from its natural state. Does this mean that every single trans person is racist? The beauty model most want to achieve is a colonized goal. We have to decolonize the way we should let our body be and grow. So when trans people take hormones or surgically alter their body, it's racism? There is a coup going on in the New York Times Cooking Community Facebook group. Here's the scoop. A member posted about making sure to vote, and the moderators removed his post since the group is supposed to be a haven from politics focused only on food. Judging by your avatar, you too are focused only on food. The members, numbering over 62,000, weren't having it, and made it clear that food is undoubtedly political. They began to fashion food to spell vote, using captions only directly related to food. Bottom line, food is political. Food can be used to build community, change lives, feed the hungry, inspire creativity, and it could also be easily squandered. Use your voice and your food to inspire change. D do you think you could change your diet? Hot tip. Posting weight loss photos shows us which bodies you value, no matter how bo body positive your caption sounds. If you don't want us to believe thinner is better, then stop reinforcing that message under the guise of self-love. That's right, my friends. Weight loss progress is ableist or fat phobic or racist or whatever the fuck. And that's actually been a really common thing for people to say the past few years. Remember when... um. What's that one singer's name? I, I forget her name. She was a fat singer and she lost all of her weight. And people were just like descending on her. Like, how dare you post the fact that you lost all your fat and now you look like a regular person. It's like, geez, dude. Like, are you are you so jealous that you haven't lost your own weight yet that you're going to just shit on everyone who is trying to live healthier and self-improve? buying plus size clothing from thrift stores you can tailor the items down to your size zero body isn't a cute youtube video idea it's fat phobic and classist and taking resources away from poor fat people who have an infinitely harder time finding clothes than you do okay so do not buy clothes that aren't your size got it can we also apply this to fat people who still think that they fit into like their high school clothing and are walking around in stuff that is like obviously too tight and nobody wants to see that. I just ran an entire mile in 9 minutes and 26 seconds. I used to weigh 363 pounds and now I'm running a mile in under 10 minutes. Congratulations. You, 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 you. Why did so many of my mutuals I thought were body positive like this? Bye. You're literally just jealous and bitter that this person has gotten into shape and is now like running. I thought you were body positive. Like, n really. You, you, you don't think that, like, an athlete's body is, is something also worthy of being positive towards? Just say no to Transformation Tuesday. Whether you're trying to depict your weight loss or weight gain, these pics aren't helpful. Preliminary research... I'm... 
God, you always with these appeals. Pre preliminary research has shown that ex exposure to transformation pictures of any kind on social media increases negative body image and self-objectification. When it comes down to it, these types of images promote physical comparisons. They promote fat phobia when depicting weight loss. When depicting weight gain, they promote competition and feelings of not being sick enough among the recovery community. Just say no to transformation pics. Literally, hide me from my own ideal so that I don't feel bad. If you post weight loss before and after pics, I will instantly unfollow you. It's triggering an inherently fat phobic smooch. What you choose to do with your body is your business, but promoting and celebrating weight loss is triggering for many people and is deeply entrenched in fat phobia. What you're showing every fat person is that our bodies are something to hate, something to celebrate becoming smaller. Diet culture is buried in capitalism and racism. I am no longer gently asking people to educate themselves. Now is the time to examine every way you make passes in your life for these violent systems. This also extends to the way fitness culture has adopted body positive language in ways that promote fat phobia insidiously. Do what makes you feel good in your body, but the ways we celebrate our bodies becoming smaller is still deeply entwined in fat phobia. Translation here is that the ideology is more important than the reality. It doesn't matter about your health. It doesn't even matter about how you feel. It doesn't matter about what your goals. What, what matters is the ideology. If you do something that is by all other objective metrics good for you, if it's fat phobic, that's what matters. Junk food does not exist. <laughs> I wish. Food is food. The use of this language is generally to police fat people, but fat people have existed before that language and will exist after it's long gone. Yeah, dude, all of those starving kulaks, they were like 600 pounds and they all died, eh? Is that how it was? Food is food. You need fats and carbohydrates too. Well, not, not really carbohydrates, but you do need fats. Food is not healthy or unhealthy. It's food. <laughs> Railing against junk food or unhealthy food is hella anti-black, classist, and anti- How is it anti-black? Food is motherfucking food. Food provides food treats. Food is good. So many people have such horrific relationships with food because diet culture teaches us to. Imagine that everything you thought you knew about food was taught on a white supremacist, capitalist, anti-black foundation, because it was. Man, like, this is where the drive for ultimate equality leads us. Everything must be equal to every other thing all the time. There is no difference between, say, eating a really greasy, fully loaded pizza and a protein shake. It's all just food. Nutrients and macros and calories, none of that shit exists. If, if it's all the same, why don't you just eat dirt? Casual fucking reminder that the white race scientists invent white race scientists. Race science, you guys. When they measure your waist, it's like measuring your skull. All right, all right. Casual fucking reminder that white race scientists invented fat phobia and the concept of obesity. If you are ever fat phobic or on some, oh well, fat is unhealthy, ooh woo bullshit, I hope you fucking know that someone's white ancestor is smiling in their grave. <laughs> you know, a show that was considered woke and radically left, um, say 10, 15, I think almost even 20 years ago, was the Boondocks. And in one of those episodes of the Boondocks, Grandpa opens a, uh, a restaurant for soul food where they, they cook up, you know, culturally relevant black foods, but they're also very, very unhealthy. And it turns out that the reason that, you know, black people historically ate that way was because, one, they were slaves. They, they had to eat whatever they could get, get their hands on. And two, because they were very poor even after slavery was, was abolished. And so this culture of cooking very unhealthy but very cheap foods and making them taste very good came about. And Grandpa keeps serving this food because he's black and it's part of his culture. And, and even though he's no longer poor the way that he was when he was young, he still feels a cultural impetus to, to serve this food. And of course, people eat it and they fucking like fall asleep in the restaurant because it, it's, it's just so, you know, insulin overpowering. I'm pretty sure someone even has like a heart attack in the restaurant. I haven't seen the episode in, in years and years, so I don't know. But basically the point is, is that even then, even in this woke lefty show, they said 
Our ancestors ate this stuff because they had to, and even though it is a cultural celebration, maybe we can also move past it. Since then, uh, instead of moving past it, they've decided to simply make being fat part of black culture. All right, plus-sized women admit they aren't attracted to overweight men. Wait, 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 wait a second. Why are the women plus-sized and the men overweight? As a plus-sized woman, there's this expectation that she'd only date overweight men. These women open up about dealing with the stigma of being plus-sized and refusing to settle and date overweight men. Well, hold on. Do you think that, like, regular-sized men should settle and date you? Like, why is it settling when you do it, but not when they... What the fuck is this? Sometimes I feel guilty because I'm not attracted to bigger guys, even though I'm plus-size myself. I find it rare to find a big guy that takes care of his appearance and hygiene the way I do. I'm a plus-size woman, but I'm not attracted to big guys. I get a lot of hate and criticism for that, but I can't help that I like average to muscular types. Well, it sounds like you need to decolonize your thinking on this and become more attracted to fat people. I'm plus size and I'm not attracted to really big guys. I've never been rude or mean, it's just not my thing. Everyone has a body they like to look at and an overweight man is not one of mine. I feel so hypocritical. I'm plus size and I'm not attracted to bigger guys. I only like average body types. Not a ton of muscles, just average. I hate when people think I have to date bigger guys because I'm plus sized. I can't help that I'm not attracted to them and I like muscular guys. Look at all this colonized thinking. I can't help it. Yes, you can. Thinness ain't an accomplishment. Weight loss ain't an accomplishment. I know y'all hate fat people and fatness so much you believe the size of your body should be praised and congratulated over. So now we've moved past don't talk about your accomplishments into it's not even an accomplishment. This process is like Yuri Bezmenov applied to fat people. Things have, uh, have gotten so ridiculous that I think this is in the UK. I'm pretty sure it's in the UK. There was a proposed law to make it illegal to alter your online photos so that you look thinner than you actually are. Tory MP Dr. Luke Evans said doctored Instagram images are creating a warped view of beauty and fueling a mental health crisis. We will monitor your social media and if it does not show you exactly as fat as we think you are, we will fine you. <laughs> and of course, to go along with all these takes, an entire industry of like, I don't know how we'd even, we'd even call it, like alternative science has, has appeared to fuel and feed these people, no pun intended, all of the reassurance they could ever possibly want. Fat is not the problem, fat stigma is. Health experts, notice how the word experts is in quotes this time around when it goes against the narrative, are sending incorrect and destructive messages about the relationship between weight and wellness. Oh, are, are you sure? Obesity is the biggest threat to the health of our nation. This all too common suggestion does far greater damage to public health than fat tissue itself. When the focus is on weight and body size, it's not obesity that damages people. It's fear mongering about their bodies that puts them at risk for diabetes, heart disease, discrimination, bullying, eating disorders, sedentariness, lifelong discomfort in their bodies, and even early death. Really, so it's, it's fear mongering about their bodies that cause all this shit. Not being so fat that you look like a naked chicken. The data refutes long-standing, widespread, and incorrect notions about health and weight, like the fact that fat is a primary driver in metabolic disease, or that weight loss prolongs life or improves health. None of this is true. Meanwhile, next fucking paragraph. It is true that many diseases are more commonly found in heavier people. <laughs> However, that doesn't mean that weight itself causes disease. Blaming fatness for heart disease is similar to blaming yellow teeth for lung cancer, rather than considering that smoking might play a role in both. Okay, so we will get into the science of this a little bit later, but I just want you to, to keep this article in mind when we do, okay? Oh god, look at the header for this article. Fat is not a bad word. For me, fat is a way of saying fuck you. No matter how people use it, fat is not a bad word. Fat is not an indication of value, health, beauty, or performance. Fat is a descriptor in the same way that black and queer are descriptors. And fat is somewhat similar to black and queer in more than just that way. It's a word that encompasses a marginalized identity. Okay, so hold on a second, hold on a second. I, I, gotta, I, I, gotta, I gotta parse this properly here, okay? It's a marginalized identity, so you're, you're identifying as fat. Well, unlike black 
and for the most part, unlike queer, you can just lose the weight. And I mean, <laughs> presumably you're not going to be like a trans fat where you like you identify as skinny while you're fat or vice versa. <laughs> trans fat. <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> How fat is weaponized. And the reclaiming of the word goes beyond size. Fat stigma is also tied to anti-blackness, in that being black is the abundance that white supremacy seeks to shrink. What? How? <laughs> so, does this mean that being a fat white guy, I'm, I'm no longer a white supremacist? Am I black now? Am I part of the abundance? My definition of fat is black as fuck, multidimensional, and futuristic. I don't know. I don't know how futuristic. It might not last another five years. Fat means I exist. Fat means taking up space and demanding more. Fat means black. Fat means fuck you. Fat means human. Fat means creating a world full of possibility without shame. Fat means saying fuck you. It honestly sounds like the way that she writes it, fat means being a colonizer. Like, you know how you see those those pictures of, like, the really fat guy in a suit, and it's, like, the capitalist, and he just has, like, a ton of money, and he's huge, and, like, the working class is, like, a skeleton, like, just barely scraping by on, like, one coin. So when this person says, fat means taking up space and demanding more, they're literally just, like, I want to be the oppressor class. <laughs> how to have sex with a fat girl. Touch, and I cannot stress this enough, the fupa. This, this picture. Uh, oh, hold on. What's a fupa? I, I don't know if I want to know. The fat upper pubic area. What? Oh my god, it's, it's, it's the gunt. That's what it is. It's like that second stomach that kind of comes out in front of the pubic region. The first... The first few times I fucked as a fat girl, I exclusively wore my boyfriend's Superman hoodie to hide my body. I was 16, a size 14, and it was 2009. Long before body positivity hit the mainstream or my Tumblr feed. Now, as a 26-year-old woman wearing a size 20, cha sex has changed year after year as my body has gotten bigger and the dating pool has gotten smaller. With plus size partners, we can press our bellies together, grab each other's bodies, and enjoy the thickness of our flesh in privacy. Touch the fupa. It's a universal truth known by fat girls that the fupa is the most intimidating part of our body. I know this because my fupa has been so touched so little that I'm surprised she hasn't shriveled up and fallen off. The hottest... <laughs> <clears throat> the hottest hookups are the ones that grab my belly like it's a third tit, kiss the flesh on the way down to the kitty, and aren't pretending my body is less than it is. I... There's a lot of things I regret. I think at this point you kind of know where, where all this is going. Diet culture and weight loss programs are a scam. Plus-sized elf makes a joke of women's bodies. Two fat professors are afraid of COVID-19 causing fat phobia. Speaking about health is traumatizing for some who are impacted negatively by diet culture. Dear men, stop working out. Physical fitness creates a cycle of toxic masculinity that must be eradicated. On thinner bodies, the strawberry TikTok dress skews a tiny bit fascist. I don't even need to, like, read the content of these articles. I I'm pretty sure at this point you can just imagine what they say, and you'll be right. The only way to be a proper BIPOC ally, to be anti-capitalist, anti-fascist, is to simply be more abundantly obese. Everything in this video is factually correct, by the way. And if you disagree, you simply haven't done enough research on the history of fatness. Stay mad. I don't know how much more I can take, but fine. The obesity epidemic isn't real and it shouldn't be an anti-capitalist talking point. When someone unironically references the obesity epidemic or even uses the word obesity, it tells me they really don't know what they're talking about when it comes to fatness. This use of the word obesity stems directly from the BMI, which was created by a eugenicist with no medical training who based the scale only on white bodies and cow math. 
Fatness is not an epidemic. Fat people existed before capitalism and before colonization. Fat phobia is a direct result of anti-blackness, and it has deadly consequences for many groups of indigenous folks and other people of color, as well as fat folks. When you make the obesity epidemic a real symptom of capitalism, you are not only ostracizing fat people from anti-capitalist thinking, but also actively ignoring that the health outcomes related to obesity are more accurately attributed to food deserts and fat phobic discrimination in healthcare. The obesity epidemic was created by Western medicine to avoid addressing the actual causes of health inequity, which is what we as anti-capitalists should be doing. I would have to like spend the entire day talking about just how many things are wrong in this video. Not only factually, but like viscerally. But let's focus on the food deserts thing, because that's an important point. And that leads us to the next topic of discussion. And considering that we are currently talking about the wider political tent that constantly says, trust the science, believe the scientists, uh, there should be no objection to talking about science, right? Because as it turns out, that is not what happens with food desertification. Now, what a food desert is, is an area in like a large city where there's no grocery store. So there's no place to actually buy fresh food. You can only go to restaurants and fast food places and, and places like that. But as reported on from the Wall Street Journal, what happens when new supermarkets open in food deserts? Not what you think. For years, public health advocates have argued that food deserts, neighborhoods without grocery stores or other fresh food vendors, contribute to a disproportionate burden of obesity and chronic disease among low-income individuals. Ready access to fresh, healthy food intuitively seems important for supporting a healthy diet. But recent evidence contests the idea that watering America's food deserts will solve the obesity crisis. Compared with high-income individuals, poor Americans tend to have diets higher in sugar, fat, and processed foods, and lower in fiber, fruits, and vegetables. This nutritional inequality is a contributor to the large income-based health disparities in the U.S. and is thought to be due in part to more limited access to healthy food. But does introducing a supermarket into a food desert change the grocery habits of nearby residents? Not so much according to a recent study. Researchers found that less than one-tenth of the nutritional inequality between high and low-income households can be explained by the availability of healthy foods. The other 90% was due to differences in demand. So, even when you give people who are overweight the option to buy healthy food, they still don't do it. It's more than simply living in the ghetto and not having access. It is a deeper problem than that. This is fucking ridiculous. People aren't obese because there's junk food advertisements on before 9 o'clock. People are obese because a pack of 20% fat mincemeat is $3.95 and a pack of 5% fat is $5.79. People are obese because a pack of biscuits is 20 pence and a pack of apples is 2 pounds. The actual problem seems to be a lack of knowledge about how diets work. Dietary fat does not equate into body fat. In fact, you're much more likely to gain body fat from eating carbohydrates than you are from eating dietary fat. And even then, it's based more on how many calories you burn, how much exercise you're doing. It's calories in, calories out. That's how it works. Your body does not violate the laws of thermodynamics. You are actually better off buying that pack of 20% fat meat over the 5% fat as long as you're also not eating an entire loaf of bread a day. The problem is sugar, it's carbs, it's gluten. That shit is just empty calories with no nutritional value that just makes you hungrier. And people just don't want to hear this, even though it's the truth. Outrage as Whole Foods CEO says ignorance and poor choices cause obesity. It's the truth, dude. Overweight and healthy is a big fat lie. Our findings refute the notion that a physically active lifestyle can completely negate the deleterious effects of being overweight and obesity. You cannot be fat and healthy at the same time. Even a fat person who, you know, lifts weights and runs and does all of those things but is still fat, they would be much healthier without all the body fat. In fact, check this out, check this out. Skinny jeans are the secret to staying slim. Oh. Shit, is, is it all actually just genetics? Researchers found that people who were obese were more likely to have a set of genes linked to being overweight. Meanwhile, people who were skinny not only had fewer genes linked to obesity, but also changes in gene regions newly associated with healthy thinness. So 
Of course, as with everything in the human condition, there is a genetic biological component. But I guarantee you, you take the obese person with obese genes and throw them into the wild and just have them starve, they'll get thin. In fact, a professor of nutrition and dietetics, Professor Tom Sanders, said, This is an important study confirming that precocious, severe obesity is often genetically determined. But he also added, Most obesity is acquired in adult life and is linked to the environment we live in. A sedentary lifestyle and abundant access to calorie-dense foods. Whatever your shape or genetic makeup, the age-old advice of a healthy level of exercise and good diet still stands. This is an article that fat activists constantly cite, and they've only ever read the headline. And this is why you get shit like this. Does obesity really not cause any health problems? I never knew. What I say, what we always say, is that being fat is not proven to cause any illness, only correlated with, and that correlation is not causation is a basic principle of science. However, many of the illnesses that are correlated with fatness are proven to cause weight gain or medications to treat them are. We also point out that there is no such thing as an illness that only fat people get. This is the problem with scientism, and I'm gonna have to do uh, a video on science versus scientism at some point. But basically, if you have already ideologically predetermined your endpoint, then you simply pick and choose all of the science that leads you there and ignore all the science that disagrees with you. Case in point, fat sex therapist compares fitness trainers to Nazis children dieting to sexual assault. I truly believe that a child cannot consent to being on a diet the same way a child cannot consent to having sex, says Sonali Rashatwar, who attends St. Olaf College. Rashatwar also believes that science is white supremacist. We should be critical of the use of science and the production of knowledge to continue promoting this idea that certain bodies are fit, able, and desirable. Is it my fatness that causes my high blood pressure? Yes. Or is it my experience of weight stigma? It's, it's definitely your fatness. She then connected the science suggesting that obesity is unhealthy to Nazism, saying that fat phobic science is often actually eugenic science. Eugenic science is Nazi science. <laughs> you know, you can say the most unscientific shit, but simply use a few of the words that some scientists have used in the past and then squint your eyes to make it real fuzzy, and then it kind of seems scientific. Even when it comes to modern problems like the coronavirus, COVID-19 death rates are 10 times higher in countries where most adults are overweight. There is a link between whether or not you're going to die of coronavirus and if you are fat. I am fat. To get the vaccine, I had to say I'm obese. This word has done incredible damage to my body. No. The damage was probably done by the fourth Big Mac you had that day. I understand that doctors are including ob- Did you censor obesity in- Oh my god. I understand that doctors are including obesity as an underlying medical condition that leads to death in COVID patients. Do these doctors have any idea what kind of impact this has on families? To be told that their loved one's body shape is partly to blame for their death? The impact doesn't matter, it matters the truth. If you die because you're too fat, it doesn't matter like the impact it has on your on your family. What matters is that you were too fat and you died because you were too fat. Furthermore, when it comes to obesity and COVID deaths, we have no evidence of causation and only a weak association that continues to be disproven as times goes by. No, it doesn't. What are these junior doctors thinking? Give me one good reason for recording fatness as a cause of death. Well, causes of death, as we've seen recently with George Floyd and other have been very politicized as of late. And I, for one, am happy to see someone actually telling the truth on these forums. What I've managed to pull from all of this, though, is that these people are screeching about fat acceptance from all possible angles. Cultural, scientific, representation, ideological. They're using politics, they're using critical theory, they're using socialist theory, they're using post-colonial theory. They're using everything that they can to basically turn fat and thin into another variation of white and non-white or something like that to create more classes and have them clash you know marxist style but the honest truth is when it comes to other alternative body types among the broader left there seems to be like a serious hit and miss right white people calling fully grown asian women cute is racist no i will not explain it's infantilizing as hell yeah i'm tired I'd rather just be called ugly at this point. 
All right. You're ugly. Aquaman looks hot because men want to be him. Carol Marcus looks hot because men want to fuck her. I, keep, I don't even know who this guy is. I keep seeing him on Twitter, and he, he, he seems to be like, like a grade A moron. But dude, dude, do you see it? Are you seriously saying that women don't want to fuck Jason Momoa? Lizzo, who the fuck is Lizzo? You know, who cares? Lizzo talks about double standards for critiquing men's bodies versus women's. We don't talk about your dick sizes, do we? Oh, 13 male celebs with seriously big bulges. Cosmopolitan, confirmed. Men who objectify women are effing horrible. Also Cosmopolitan, 36 summer Olympic bulges that deserve gold. How many times? How many fucking times has there been, like, height shaming for men? I've done, like, a, a whole height shame video in the past. And, like, you know, dick size shaming. Even when the guy in question is tall and probably has, like, an average or, or even slightly above average dick size, they'll simply throw that out there if they don't like what he's saying. It's like, oh, you like the wrong politics, you like the wrong sports teams, like the wrong video games, have the wrong opinions online, make fun of the wrong thing, make the wrong joke, whatever. Oh, you're probably short and you have a tiny dick. Dude, this shit happens everywhere. And sometimes it's funny, right? Like you see a guy who has like 10 guns or he has like a giant truck and it's like, that guy's compensating, ha ha ha. Like it's a joke, all right? And it's fine, it's allowed, but don't act like it doesn't happen. Do you recall Beachbody Ready? This was, I think 2016 or something, it was a while ago, where London Mayor Sadiq Khan banned this shit because it was apparently um, objectifying because it was a woman who was in shape and very clearly worked to get in shape. And it was it was like a, a protein powder weight loss advertisement and everyone was like, how dare you? On February 10th of 2020, Sadiq Khan was proud to announce on his official Twitter, the Nubian skin advertisement, which was just like an underwear advertisement. And you'll notice it's four plus size women and two dudes with rippling abs. Where's the representation? Where's the outcry? The whole body positive argument falls apart as soon as you see how the left treats people with alternative body types when one they're not fat they're extremely skinny or they're in some other way different or two they're not leftists it is extremely telling to me that when radical feminist male female whatever doesn't matter when they write about what looks are outdated or sexist or toxic it's always traditionally attractive people, men and women alike. And when they write about what's actually sexy, amazing, stunning, brave, and what should be pined after, it just so happens to be how they look, and it's generally kinda hideous. And then, when they bump into somebody who is in some way hideous, in the exact way that they've written about, but does not share their politics, maybe they have some problem that is not socially acceptable to admit, like you can go online and say you have all sorts of different mental problems, but if you know, if you're actually an incel, like if you're someone who can't get a girlfriend and you're like depressed about it and you feel like the world's out to get you, you're kind of on the lowest rung or the totem pole when it comes to men. Yeah, body positivity doesn't apply to them. Body positivity doesn't apply to say short men or thin women or women who have suffered from anorexia or bulimia. The rules that have been set out in this video are only valid if it helps that intersectional lefty cause. Which is why, at least to me, it seems like a big old bunch of bullshit. And that being said, whenever I see somebody demand something regarding body positivity, I just laugh at them. Because I know that they're living hypocrites. I'm still gonna tell the same jokes. I'm still gonna laugh at the same things. You're still gonna be ridiculous when you complain that the new Resident Evil game has a fat guy and they're like, how dare you link fatness with gluttony? And it's like, you do that every time you complain about capitalism and post a caricature. So you know what? I'm willing to bet that if you're actually out here talking about body positivity, you're just a fucking hypocrite. And there is no reason anyone should believe you. And if you want to actually be body positive, then encourage people to self-improve. Help the fat person at your local gym. Tell them they can make it, because you know what? We're all gonna make it, bros. For real.